Today, we celebrate the vision and generosity of a man who is deeply committed to improving the wellness in body and mind of his fellow Quebecers and Canadians. Lawrence Rossi is known as a business leader, and for good reason. In 1910, Larry's grandfather, Salim Rossi, opened a single store near the old port. Larry's father, George, then built that store into a chain of 20. In 1973, eight years after completing his BA at McGill, Larry took leadership of his family's successful retail business. Over the next two decades, he grew the Rossi chain, more than doubling the number of locations. Then, as they say in the business circles, he pivoted in 1992, he made the visionary decision to convert the Rossi stores into what we now know as Dolorama. Il n'a pas tardé à franchir les frontières de la province natale de la famille Rossi pour ouvrir un premier magasin à l'extérieur du Québec, à Grand Falls, au Nouveau-Brunswick, puis un autre en Ontario, puis au Manitoba, en Alberta, en Saskatchewan, en Colombie-Britannique, Sans oublier Terre-Neuve. En 2012, Dolorama a inauguré son 700e magasin au Canada et la chaîne en compte aujourd'hui 1030. Et son chiffre d'affaires annuel dépasse les 2 milliards et demi de dollars. That is one side of Larry Rossi. Then there is the Larry Rossi, the community leader who, along with his wife, Cookie, is a tireless champion for health care. Par sa générosité exceptionnelle, Larry Rossi a eu une profonde influence sur la vie de milliers de Montréalais, de Québécois et de Canadiens. Not one to seek the limelight, his focus is always on the people in need. His commitment has taken many forms over the years, and we are fortunate that he has been a great supporter of McGill. For example, Larry is helping our university deliver mental health and wellness services that are customized to the needs of our students. And of course, there is the extensive Rossi Cancer Network, which works to improve the quality of life of the tens of thousands of Quebecers who are diagnosed with cancer each year, and of course, improve the lives of their family. Quelle que soit l'envergure des projets qu'il a appuyés, Larry Rossi a toujours œuvré inlassablement pour améliorer de façon significative la vie des Québécois. En 2014, il a été nommé officier de l'Ordre national du Québec. The following year, he was appointed to the Order of Canada in recognition of his contributions to the retail sector in Canada and for his support of healthcare and social service organizations. It is with great pleasure that I now call upon our Chancellor to confer upon Mr. Lawrence G. Rossi, McGill's University highest honor, the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Ladies and gentlemen, I now invite Dr. Larry Rossi to deliver the Convocation Address. Dr. Rossi. Okay. Chancellor Mian, Chairman of the Board, Kip Cobbett, Principal Fortier, honored guests, distinguished faculty members, proud families, friends, and fellow McGill grads. When Principal Fortier asked me to give today's address, I was honored and moved 
Initially, then I was more than a little apprehensive. What could I say that would be of value to you at this point in your life? How could I inspire you and your futures? The things I like to talk about are mostly related to retail. As my family knows, I really perk up when the conversation turns to things like real estate sites for a new store or interesting items I found on my last buying trip, none of which make, you, make YouTube-worthy commencement speeches. In preparing for today, I can recall my years, I had to recall my years at McGill, all the way back to 1965, and as I thought about it, I remembered, old, remembered friends, new and old, special professors and their classes, and mostly the sheer exuberance of youth. Suddenly I realized that, just like most of you, I had no clear direction coming out of McGill. That's when it clicked. Maybe there is something I could share with you. Simply put, graduating isn't the end of anything. It's actually the beginning of everything. Whether that means pursuing your education further or starting your career, now is the time to jump in head first. So allow me to share my seven life lessons that may guide you from here. First and foremost, do what you love and do it with passion. If you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. I'm a living example of that, and don't think my life was a straight line because it wasn't and rarely is for anyone. I began working in my family's general variety stores as a summer job during my McGill days, and then full-time after I graduated. And it wasn't written on the wall that one day I would lead that business, nor was it set in stone that I would be successful in retail. And no one could have predicted when we opened our first Dollarama location in 1992 that we'd become a national retail chain with over 1,000 stores. I began Dollarama when I was 50, and today at 73, I'm still very passionate about what I do. And this leads to the next important lesson I want to share with you. It's not about being the first at something, it's about being the best at it. I can assure you I did not invent the dollar store concept. Before I opened that first store, the concept was widely present in the US for a number of years, and there were already a few shops here and there in Montreal. So you do not need to have an original idea, but you need to execute it better than anyone else. I have witnessed many businesses fail by trying to copy the perceived success of others. You must chart your own course and pursue life in your own way. When we started Dollarama, the dollar stores of that era were mostly dimly lit, messy shops that were not destined for lasting success. As a result, we rethought everything, changed the product, the packaging, the entire store environment. We focused on providing our customers with the best value. In essence, we charted our own course and executed our own vision of the dollar store. When we opened our first store, we did it carefully, conservatively, and strategically. Here comes the next lesson. Do not fear failure. You will never succeed if you never take any risks. When I was run, running the Rossi chain before the switch to Dollarama, I saw a retail landscape shifting and the envi competitive environment getting tougher. I saw an opportunity to roll out this new retail model, but it was at, at a huge risk. It takes hard emotional work to learn from what isn't working and to try again differently and better the second or third time around. Truth be told, I doubt very much I would be standing here before you today if I hadn't made that crucial decision to try something new and open the first Dollarama store. Ready for more? It's also very important to always challenge yourself. Do not let yourself get bored or complacent. Try new things and in fact always build. You may not know where it's going, but it's always worth the journey to try something new and see how things play out. When I started working in the family business, I wasn't fully challenged. So I tried to a number of other ventures, including footwear, household textiles, and exercise fitness. Looking back, I now realize how much I learned from my various life experiences. Like my time at McGill, each and every thing I have done has become a part of me, and each and every experience has prepared me in some way for the journey that has been my life. I have tried and failed more than once, but I always got up and tried again and again until I found my true passion. Next lesson, timing. Try to be aware of the windows of opportunity that open for moments in time and then may close forever. 
Try to develop a skill of keeping your eyes open for opportunities as they arise. And whatever métier you choose, the, uh, the, the right timing will be a key element of your success. As McGill grads, I'm sure you're all very bright. But brains alone will not make you successful. Success requires your intelligence be coupled with timing, hard work, and dedication to your particular field. So if you've been counting, this is life lesson number six. Take every opportunity you can to learn from others. I have learned from all the people whose paths I have crossed throughout my life. I believe wholeheartedly that you win by being a good listener. And lastly, while you attain a modicum of success, giving back matters. The most important thing that success has brought is the ability to give back. It wasn't obvious to me when I started out, but I can assure you that as your ability to give grows, so will your generosity, or at least so it should. Creating our cancer, Rossi Cancer Network and Family Foundation has fulfilled our lives immeasurably. Believe it, it is better to give than to receive. So, should you choose to follow this advice and use your God-given smarts, plus all you have learned here at McGill, then there's a chance that one day you too will be invited to give the convocation speech. It has been said that the secret of success is a good spouse and a happy family life. I've been blessed on both counts. In this spirit, I'm delighted to share this honor with my wife, Cookie, and my family here with me today. We are humbled by this honor. So please allow me to close with a shout out to Montreal. I've been fortunate enough to travel the globe. In my humble opinion, Montreal is an incredible city in a great promise and one of the best countries in the world. I hope that your time in McGill has turned at least some of you into Montrealers. We welcome you with open arms. To the class of 2016, remember this great day and remember this great achievement. Remember, remember above all that life is a gift and the way you live your life is your gift to those who come after you. Make it a fantastic life by seizing each moment and always challenge yourself to do better and to be better than you were the day before. Thank you and congratulations graduates.